Now, Bailey's going to lead the next part of our segment on the Global Classroom. And let's make sure we can connect to her first of all. So, Bailey, how are you? And can you hear me first of all? Hi, Mr. Shaw. It's so good to be here with you all. Well, it's great to hear you. Where are you being in live from today? I'm actually outside of Chicago, so it's good morning for me. Well, it's good afternoon, I think, for most of you watching, or good evening for some of you, too. It is indeed. Actually, what's the weather like over there in Chicago? I believe it's the Windy City. Is that right? Windy City. It's also the snowy city right now. We just have gotten so much snow. So after this, I think I'm going to bundle up and head outside and <laughs> play in the snow, maybe. I'm very jealous. So, Betty, anyway, over to you now for this section. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Bailey Ritter, and I am beyond honored to be joining you all in community today. Today's classroom is focused on inspiration and hope, which are two secret ingredients to becoming the change makers that I know you all are and can be. Believe it or not, you all are the reason I wake up every day and ask myself if I'm doing what I can with the resources and energy that I have to leave our planet a better place. You all are members of this growing global movement that is tackling some of the most important issues facing our world today. And I am inspired by each and every one of you. At National Geographic, we call this community Gen Geo, which is a generation of young people empowered to act on the problems facing our communities today. But we are more than just the next generation of leaders. We're some of the current leaders today making change now. Now, before I introduce you all to one of my Gen Geo community members, I thought I should tell you a little bit about me first. Um, I'm a 23-year-old environmental people person who is dedicated to ensuring this rapidly growing youth movement is inclusive of all. Coming from a town of only 36, people. Yep, you heard that right. <laughs> I did not see where I fit into the change making picture because I didn't see anybody who looked like me who was my age making the change and I sure didn't see any solutions. But just like some of you watching, I decided to act and take that the solutions into my own hands and haven't stopped since. Like Mr. Shaw said, I helped found Operation Endangered Species, which is a collaborative effort that focuses on saving endangered species from extinction. And since 2012, this program has raised and released over 500 alligator snapping turtles, which are critically endangered in, in my home state of Illinois, back into the wild. And I'm also the host and creator of the Rise Up webinar, which is supported by the Ocean Project and is a youth-led monthly webinar that connects, inspires, and empowers young people, just like yourselves, through peer-to-peer -peer training, networking, and skill building, all for free. I'm also a proud 2020 National Geographic Young Explorer and a youth advisor for the Ocean Project, which is actually how I met Gehekashan. Gehekashan Basu is the founder and president of the Green Hope Foundation, which she founded at the age of 12 <laughs> and has been named a National Geographic Young Explorer, a Forbes 30 Under 30 awardee, a United Nations human rights champion, and is also the youngest recipient of Canada's top, tw top 25 women of influence not to mention the only Canadian to win the International Children's Peace Prize and one of the top 100, 100 sustainable development goals leaders in the world. She's truly impressive and I'm so honored to be joining this conversation with her today. Kekashan, would you mind sharing a little bit more about your um, work and journey? Awesome, yes. Thank you so much, Bailey. And hello, everyone. It's really great to connect with all of you uh, today, young people like us have a huge responsibility to protect our planet. And today I am so happy to share my journey with you. So let me begin by sharing my screen. Great, so the words empathy, love, care, peace, these have always played a really important role in my life. And I come from a family where these qualities have always been a part of our daily lives. You know, I have seen my parents go out really early in the morning every weekend to distribute food, clothes to those in need, and I used to always accompany them. 
And segregating our waste, composting them, recycling, upcycling were part of our daily lives. And I've seen my grandmother grow organic vegetables on her terrace to this day. So I always believed that protecting the planet, helping the community was a way of life that was, you know, normal for everyone because it was for me. But my bubble burst at the age of seven when I saw this picture of a dead bird with its stomach full of plastic. And I had sleepless nights because my curious seven-year-old brain kept me awake with the thoughts of the bird's pain and agony before it died. And it kept telling me that there was something very wrong in this image. But I could not understand what exactly was wrong. So I started talking to my parents, reading books, uh, researching, and then I realized that I would have to do something to stop this atrocity from happening ever again. So then I started speaking to my friends, to shops, restaurants, beauty salons, talking to them about why they should not use plastic, why they should save water, segregate their waste. And then on my eighth birthday, which is World Environment Day, 5th June, I planted my first tree. And there has been no looking back since then because I realized that just talking about the problems is not going to solve the problem. We need to take action. When I was 11, the United Nations invited me to speak at my first UN conference about the work that I was doing so that I could inspire other children to uh, do the same. And when I was 12, I was the youngest international delegate at the Rio Plus 20 Earth Summit in Brazil. And over there, out of the 50,000 delegates, I was one of the very, very few children below 18. And ignoring children in such an important process did not sit well with me at all. And hence, on my return home, I founded Green Hope Foundation so that children and young people could have a platform for action through which they could become eco-warriors. We started with just five friends, and today I'm so happy to say that we have more than 140,000 people working with us across 25 countries. We've planted over 142,000 trees worldwide, planted over 5,000 mangroves in Suriname, Indonesia, the UAE, the Bahamas, cleaned up over 200 beaches, parks, ravines, canals, worked on sea and river turtle conservation across the world from Seychelles to Canada. We are strong advocates of growing your own food, especially during this pandemic. And we've conducted over 225 education for sustainable development academies. Now, in 2015, uh, the United Nations adopted the 17 sustainable development goals and I was the youngest at 15 out of the 193 youth selected to represent each UN member state at the adoption ceremony. And I realized then that the work Green Hope Foundation does was exactly what the SDGs mandated. And all we had to do was connect our projects to each of the SDGs. So the overarching aim of the Sustainable Development Goals is to leave no one behind and ensure a life of dignity for all. Hence, we work not only in urban areas, but in the rural areas and villages as well with children of the marginalized communities who have no access to education. They don't have clean drinking water, no sanitation or toilets, no electricity. So what we do is that we educate the children in these communities through education for sustainable development, working with them to come up with solutions to solve their local challenges. And since most of these children don't go to school, we use eco fashion, sports, writing, art, dance, music and drama to spread awareness so that we can really touch their hearts. And we teach them how to plant trees, how to grow their own food, how to compost, we distribute livestock to them, so hens and ducks, so that they can learn to love nature. We've installed solar panels in a town in Liberia so that they can have light at night to study and safe spaces. 
And we built toilets in uh, the villages of Bangladesh as well as deep bore tube wells and rainwater harvesting systems so that the people of the village can have clean arsenic free water. And you know, my journey with Green Hope Foundation has proven to me that you're never too young or too old to make a difference. And at Green Hope Foundation, we always say that our future is in our hands. So don't wait for someone else to come and tell you to protect the planet. Take that first step, no matter how daunting it might seem. And if every single one of us does our bit for the planet, we can definitely achieve the future we want, a peaceful, equitable, harmonious, and a sustainable one. Thank you very much. And back to you, Bailey. Wow, I'm endlessly energized every time you talk about your story, your journey, and everything that you've done thus far. And, you know, as people watching are probably thinking like, wow, she's done so much, but I'm sure it all hasn't been easy. So a question that I have for you, Kakashan, is what are some of the biggest hurdles that you've had to face in your journey thus far? Yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. There have been so many challenges First of all, people did not take an eight-year-old seriously initially, but uh, then they started seeing the impact that my work was having, and thereafter uh, they began noticing my age, and that's why we always say that you know age has nothing to do with capability. And apart from that, I also faced a lot of threats to my life. I was a victim of cyberbullying, harassment, but I did not let anything come in my way because my passion is stronger than my fear of these really bad people and it's really important to remember that you don't let these bullies stop you from doing your good work because when you do your good work there are always going to be detractors so the journey is long and hard but you know you just keep going so now that we're all inspired what would be your message to everyone watching today and in the future um, to take action for our planet I'd say that it's always uh, important to remember that whatever comes from the heart stays. So please be empathetic, be honest, hardworking, passionate, positive, and these qualities will really live on and create change in the world. And you know, most people live only for themselves, but believe me, when you help even one person, you sleep so much better at night. And you don't need to start an organization to make a difference. You can start at home with yourself and the change will follow. And don't do it for uh, the fame and the awards or the media coverage. Do it because you want to help others. You want to do good for the planet and your community. And it will not be a bed of roses, but never give up. I love that. Thank you so much. I don't know about you all, but I'm feeling especially inspired and excited to go out there and be the change. Um, so thank you so much, Kahekashan, uh, for your brilliant answers and your work. Um, you all have the power now to be the change and find the solution. And at National Geographic, we believe that young people are key to addressing some of the world's most pressing problems. As we like to say, you're a part of Gen Geo, a community of young people who are committed to exploring connections seeing how complex human and natural systems interact and change over time and taking action for our planet. So thank you so much. As you can see, we invite you to join the Gen Geo conversation by sharing your story, the important work young people are doing for our planet and the hope we all have for the future. So go to natgeo.org slash Gen Geo to join the community and connect with other young people around the world who want to make a difference just like you. And Mr. Shaw, I think you're connecting with some young people who have questions. Yeah, I've got to say from both of you really, we're very inspired on that side of it. And there are some interesting feeds coming through. Um, one in particular is quite an interesting one uh, for Kei Kashan. So I've got somebody coming in from Deutschland in Germany, uh, Kathleen. Uh, so vielen Dank, Kathleen, for the message coming through. And actually, Kathleen is only 11 years old and said, I've, I've been watching what you're saying. And my best translation is from, from the question is, um, I'm very inspired. What do you think I should do at age 11 to make a difference? <laughs> it's a big question. 
Uh, Kirk or Sean, are you happy to answer that, your idea on that? So somebody only age 11, seen what you said and they've gone, wow, what can I do age 11? Well, as I said, uh, first of all, thank you, Kathleen, for the question. As I said, you're never too young or old to make a difference. So there is a lot that you can do. Uh, if you see in your community that you know, you're able to uh, plant trees, for example, or uh, take part in recycling campaigns or spread awareness amongst your friends and try to educate them about uh, growing their own food, for example. That is a really good way to start and then educating yourself, your family and your friends. And especially during this pandemic, you can even join uh, webinars and dialogues such as these to learn more about what you can do, get inspired by others and share best practices. And, you know, take those small steps in your home so that you're able to uh, bring about change no matter what. But yes, your age is an advantage for you never look at that as a detractor and yeah you can do so much to bring about uh, change and I really look forward to seeing your impact uh, in this world. Brilliant answer I think it's a really important one there saying it doesn't matter your age so e even at my age I can get there and do something as well uh, as well as being young. Now there's quite a few questions in saying let's go for it let's make a difference let's make a change let's make 21 work hard there's an interesting question I think from South Africa and I, th I think the name is Hugh well, there might be a typo on here possibly. Uh, this is an interesting one. So Hugh's somebody who is doing recycling, very passionate about it, uh, encouraging people on his neighborhood to do that. But Hugh's saying he gets frustrated that other people don't see the importance of recycling and he sees people not doing it. Okay. Difficult question to put to you, but if you're okay, how do you suggest who Hugh goes about sort of uh, gently trying to persuade people to go with him and, and not to be fr too frustrated or set back by this? Thank you, Hugh, for that very important question. And I can completely relate to you because I have been there and continue to be there every single day trying to get people to change their mindsets. And my advice would be that you keep doing your work. You don't stop. And somehow or the other, once people see that you are committed to uh, bringing about positive change, you continue to do your work no matter what they say. I have seen in my experience that they do realize that, you know, what you are doing is good. And then they think that, oh, that is something that I should do as well. So yeah, it can be frustrating and it can be very hard at times that people are not listening to you and you feel really bad about it. But, you know, I'd say just keep going and uh, people will see that work and they will eventually join you. It's like, like I, also said it's a very long road ahead it's not going to come like this but you know we just have to keep going to achieve that sustainable world wonderful answer i think we all relate to the idea just, just be the light be the hope there do the positive thing and people will eventually follow what you're doing and stay true to it so uh, time is moving on so there are more things coming through perhaps i'll pass them on to you after the session uh, but on behalf of myself keiko shan wonderful answers there bailey amazing stuff as well and from ourselves in the Global Classroom, thank you very much. And we'll see you hopefully soon as well. And stay tuned in. Thank you very much. Thank you.